Good, good morning, <laughs> YouTube. This is Johnny. Uh, down the lower level, as you can see, this is where the main library is. And of course, there's books in back of me, but there's also books around the room. And uh, so, yeah, there's books everywhere. There's books in the back room, but I think you've seen the back room library. And there's books in the hallway. And there's books upstairs in the main study. And there's books in the living room. And there's books in the dining room. And my wife has a room full of her books. And yeah, I always tell people our house is like a library which is what I like. I'd rather have a house full of books than a house full of just empty space. You know, sometimes it always amazes me. I go to people's houses, which is very rare, but there's nothing in there. <laughs> there's furniture, there's maybe a TV, some chairs, a rug, and, um, that's about it. There's no, uh, there's no books. <laughs> but uh, this is, what is today? Today is a Tuesday here in West Michigan. It is a sunny, cold day, which is a blessing. It is going on 1030. Let me see, what day is today? I think it's the 23rd. I don't have my... Uh, my calendar with me or my clock with me. I mean, I have my clock, but I don't know what day it is. I know it's a Tuesday. Could be the 23rd or the 24th. But uh, in my last video, I showed you a book nook. The book nook is the local library used bookstore, which is about five minutes from where we live. And uh, it's called a Herrick, Herrick District Library. It's the main library here in uh, Holland. Well, one thing I should mention, there are other libraries here in Holland. There's the Hope College. Liberal Arts has a, has a good library. I used to go there a number of years ago. I look at the magazines and I would look at certain books. I have done it in a long time. And then years ago, there's Western Theological Seminary, which has a great library. I used to go there years ago, but I don't go there anymore. It's open to the public, and years ago you could get a library card at Western Theological Seminary, but I don't do that anymore because I have my own <laughs> Christian library, which is sufficient, and I have plenty of books. But many years ago, I used to go there and do research and working on my Bible studies for Sunday school class and things like that. But now I don't need to do that. But as I said in my last video that I was going to show you thrift store books. But then I was looking at these books and I got most of these I got from the Blue Stockings bookshop here in town. And uh, I only got a fair few from a thrift store. Uh, and also, my wife and I, a couple of weeks ago, we went to Finville, which has a public library, and they have a used book room, and we got some books there. We went out for a drive in the country, look at the fall colors, and I'll, I'll show those I got at the Finville Public Library used book room. I got this book there. It's Peter Matheson, The Tree Where Man Was Born. Elliot, uh, Elliot Porter, he's the photographer, The African Experience. Uh, I collect the writings of Peter Matheson, and I didn't have this. And it was only like 50 cents. <laughs> and it has nice, it's kind of older. It was published in 1972. And, but it's, it, it's, it fits, I didn't have it in my Peter Matheson collection. I just showed you my Paris Review. He's one of the the founders of the Paris Review, Peter Matheson. 
but there's all kinds of photos in it. I probably I primarily got it for the text. And I like the photos. It's really great photos of of Africa and uh, I have a few books on Africa, but not many. Anyway, I picked this up, Peter Matheson. He he's written novels, he's written uh nature books and things like that. And then I picked up there a novel I had this in paperback and I took the paperback to the book nook yesterday but this is a novel by Brian Moore the statement a novel I collect his novels I, I don't really find them but this is a hardback I found at the Finville library used book room I have this also in paperback uh, this is a novel by Scott Spinger, The Ship Made of Paper. I was reading this uh, a year ago. I got halfway through it. <clears throat> For some reason, I didn't finish it, uh, but I like his writings. I didn't dehaul them this summer. I have like three or four of his novels. Scott Spinger, Ship Made of Paper. And then I, I picked this book at uh, Bibles from Mexico. I haven't found anything there lately, but I collect the essays of John McPree, and I found this one, the D the Dioid Pumpkin Seed. <laughs> uh, it says here, this is a fascinating story of the dream of a completely new aircraft. A hybrid of the airplane and rigid airship. Huge wingless moving slowly through the lower sky. Uh, it floats. It carries bridges, buildings, fleets of trucks. It is a flying warehouse. Something So it's a, that's what it's about. But This is an older edition. This, is, this one came out in 1973. And then, what else? I picked this book up at Gateway, which is the thrift store for the Holland Rescue Mission. This is James McPherson's Antietam, The Battle That Changed the Course of the Civil War. I have McPherson's uh, famous book on the Civil War, The Battle Cry of Freedom, acclaimed as the single the finest sing of single volume on the war and its background, the Civil War. So I, I picked this up. It was only like, you know, I think 90 cents. I, I have, I think I have a box full of Civil War books, but I'm not sure. I might have given them away and dehauled them. I had a lot of them, but I'm not sure now if I kept them. I just don't remember anymore. But I kept a few. And my wife, she, a couple of weeks ago, she went to a thrift store and she found this Alice Monroe, which I didn't have, which surprised me. Li Dear Life Stories. She's one of my favorite uh, short story writer. I have a, a collection of her short stories and, her, and she wrote some novels, but it's only 60 cents. So This so yeah, she got this for me, Dear Life, Short Stories by Alice Monroe. And I picked this up at the Gateway Center. This is a book that I had and I donated it to the Gateway Center. And I was looking for it the other day, the, a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't find it. Then I realized I dehauled it, but then I found it back at the Gateway Center. This is South... Harris E. Salisbury, A Journey for Our Times, a memoir. Uh, I don't, he uh, says Harrison Salisbury began his journey. He tells us a Victorian child born in a Victorian family six years before the First World War, uh, grew up in Minnesota, a goy in a Jewish ghetto, caught in a whiff of... Uh, 
Icaianism in college and set out to seek my fortune. I spent my life as a reporter, correspondent, editor, writer, mostly on the fault lines of the world. Russia, the communist countries, China, Southeast Asia, behind the lines at Hanoi, but also in the turbulent zone, zones of America, Capone's Chicago, Huey Lawn's Louisiana, Teenage Gangland in New York, Bill Connors, Alabama, the riots of the 60s. So, you know, it just covered a, American history from a journalist point of view. He wrote some other books, which I, I think I dehauled. He wrote a lot of books. I mean, he wrote a lot of books. And unfortunately, I got rid of the ones I had. I do have the the 900 Days, the Siege of Leningrad, which I kept. But uh, anyway, he wrote a lot of books on Russia and things. But I got that. And then I picked this up at the Blue Stockings. <coughs> uh, Hissing Cousins, the life long rivalry of Eleanor Roosevelt and Alice Roosevelt Longsworth by Mac Pacer and Timothy DeWeer. Uh, I, I collect books on the, uh, L, uh, FDR and Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife, and this is his, her cousin. Alice Roosevelt Longsworth. <clears throat> so I picked it. This is only 50 cents. <clears throat> I also picked this up for, for 50 cents. This is a novel by Gore Vidal, Julian the Apostate. I had this in a paperback. I got this for 50 cents. It's a hardback. And I just wanted it because it was in perfect condition and put it with my Gore Vidal collection. It's historical fiction on Julian the Apostate. Uh, he lived in 361 AD. Anyway, I picked that up for 50 cents. I also picked this up for 50 cents. The Atlas of Literature General Editor Malcolm Bradbury. This is uh, like it has uh, different chapters, like a literary atlas, like it has uh, Paris in the 20s. It has all these places in Paris where you find writers like, uh, well, painters and writers and James Joyce and Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway, Gertrude Stein, uh, William Faulkner, different places in Paris that they lived at in the 20s. And then it has like a Berlin, the central of German modernism. So it has all these writers, the German writers at that time and where they lived and like Joseph Roth and Robert Musel and anyway it's it has a chapter on the Greenwich Village the Greenwich Village it's a, it's a literary atlas so you look at all these places and where these writers and poets and painters lived it has a chapter on like oh Civil War tales. Oh no, the gold, the Cold War tales. Uh, Dylan Thomas, Wales, Broadway, London in the fifties. It's just, it's a literary atlas. So you look at all these writers and you look at where they lived in these different places. So I just, it's only fifty cents. And then I picked this up. I think I got this at some thrift store, Bozak Cousin Betty, or Betty. I had this already, but uh, I wasn't too sure, so I picked it up. 
And then I picked up this two novels and a hardback by John P. McQueen. McQueen. I have other novels by him, but I can't find them. So I might have dehauled him. But this was only like, uh, I think, 50 cents. I want to read him. I don't know. I can't find the ones I had. I don't know what I'd do with them. I don't think I'd dehauled them. They're around somewhere. Then I picked up this memoir on so skin, uh so, so Vinci's, I can't pronounce his name. This is the oak and the, and the calf. Uh, and Alexandra Soskinski, I can't pronounce his name. I wish I could pronounce names, but this is the oak and the calf sketches of a literary life in Soviet Union. So I picked this up at the Blue Stockings, I think. Yeah, for a dollar. I have most of his writings on the bookcase over there. But I didn't have this one for his memoir. I gotta read him. It's on my... I wanna read his... Um, uh, his writings. He's written a lot of books. You see them in the back. He's written a lot of writings. I was surprised. Cancer Ward, The First Circle, uh, August 1914, uh, Lenin in Zurich, The Gulag Archipelago, The World is Split Apart. He's written a lot of things, and I want to get all his writings. This is uh, Mark Twain and His World by Justin Kaplan. It's, a, it's an older book. But I have his biography uh, by Just, Justin Kaplan. He wrote a very famous award-winning biography of Mark Twain. And this is only 50 cents at Blue Stockings. It's just uh, an illustrated of what America, a Mark Twain in his world, and I don't know, it was only 50 cents, and so I picked it up. For, I have a huge Mark Twain collection, that's why I got it. So, there's Mark Twain on the cover. And I found this at Bibles to Mexico. I had this in a paperback, and I can't find it, but this is Tom Wolfe in Our Time. These are essays. There's a drawing of Tom Wolfe. I think this was illustrated by Tom Wolfe. I think he was a... He illustrated himself, but I'm not going to... I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, Jacket Art by Tom Wolfe. Jacket Design by Sheila Wolfe. So I think he did the drawings. But I am not absolutely sure. But I collect all of Tom Wolf, and that's why I I grabbed it. And it was mine. Uh, there was an Andy Warhol. I think he did. I think he did the drawings. I am not absolutely sure now. I should check this out. Let me see. It says here. It should say in here. Uh, I'm not sure if he did the drawings himself, Tom Wolf. I I I'm, I can't be emphatic. But I really like his the drawings. And uh, so. But I picked this up. I had it in paperback, but I can't find it. But this is a hardback edition. I picked up at Bibles for Mexico. So those are the thrift store books. And I mentioned that uh, yesterday I was at the Book Nook, which was a Monday. And I got a lot of books. <laughs> uh, 
I'll show those in a future video, the, a book nook haul. It was just incredible. I found out that the books that I collect, it's kind of like I'm frozen in a certain time in American literary history. And I'm not really in tune with the 2021. I'm more like in the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, the 30s, the 20s. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pick up Josie. Okay, I'll see ya. Did you want to go out for lunch with us? No, we're gonna go. Captain Sunday. You can bring me a hamburger back. Bring you a hamburger back. Yeah. All right. Have a good time. Well, it's a nice little outing. I know, she'll like it. Yeah, Carol's taking out Josie Joy, <laughs> picking her up at her school and taking her out for lunch. So, yeah, um, as far as what I'm reading, I got this, I think I showed this in the mail. I got this book in the mail, High White Notes, The Rise and Fall of Gonzo Journalism by David S. Wills. So I've been reading that pretty steadily. I'm really into Hunter S. Thompson, and I came across this on Amazon, and I don't know. I'm, I like American writers, and he's, like I said a minute ago, he... I remember reading him years ago in The Rolling Stones. This is a little reporting, The Rolling Stones, and it has edited by Paul Shalland, and there's writings in here. Under S. Thompson is in here. Uh, all these writers I collect, well, I don't really collect them, because I do collect Hunter S. Thompson, but... I collect books on the Rolling Stones and Tom Wolfe's in here. Uh, anyway, so I, was, I used to read Hunter's Thompson, the Rolling Stones, and I wish I had those original <laughs> Rolling Stones with Hunter's Thompson's uh, journalism in them, but I don't. But so yeah, I've been reading this last couple of days. High White Notes, The Rise and Fall of Gonzo Journalism by David S. Wills. So that's it. <clears throat> oh, I did get this book from uh, y uh, yesterday, no, Friday. This novel by Jonathan Latham, As She Climbed Across the Table. As you know, I'm, I'm reading Jonathan Latham's Motherless in Brooklyn which I'm almost done with. But I didn't have this one in my Jonathan Latham, which is down there on the bookcase. So I got this. Oh, I also got this book at the book nook. Figuring. These are, uh, it's nonfiction by Maria Papavela. It's kind of hard to, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you would call this. It's nonfiction, essays, feminism, uh, biography, but it looked kind of interesting. It was only, a, I think, a dollar fifty, so I picked it up. So I will sign off. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Had a good reading weekend. You have a good reading week, and I'll show that book nook haul. Sometime this week, I hope to get some books in the mail. I just one book, it's nothing really major. So, yeah, thank you for the comments, thank you for the new subscribers, and uh, yeah, this is the, the lower level. And uh, I suppose you've seen over here, so yeah, so I'll sign off. Until next time, uh, yeah, uh, we're not into Thanksgiving, so, but I do hope you have a good, good Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Uh, as we have seen in the news, the COVID is really rampant again due to people not being vaccinated. So get vaccinated, get your booster, and uh, until next time, bye.